friends, it's Kate from Venison for Dinner here, back on my snowy homestead. It's lovely here. Stick around. I'm back home and baking cookies with Rowan and Amos. Marius and the other kids are at the dentist. So I kind of left you hanging there. As well as hookworms, which are responsible for my stomach aches when I eat different things. And microfilaria, which are for my like dust mite and hay fever and that sort of stuff. I also had a tapeworm, friends. Apparently they are more common than people think. So hookworms and microfilaria, you feel no ill whatever after they die from the frequency therapy. Frequency therapy basically is such a high frequency, it like shakes and kills the parasites so they like grasp off and die off. The tapeworm is more rough though, and it's rough on your body with like stomach cramps and digestive upset and such. And I definitely have that as well as I think just the stress of traveling on my body is hard on my guts. Hello, stress guts. Um, so I'm not quite back to normal. I've tested a couple things to see if I could eat them and it was so-so. Um, however, today I am, sugar is the one thing I'm still kind of unsure of and gluten, of course. So I'm baking bread without any added sugar, and I'm baking chocolate chip cookies with gluten, and we are gonna test these and see how I feel. I'm not convinced on the cookies. I do think, I think the bread's gonna be okay without sugar. The, apparently the tapeworm, the sugar is what was feeding the tapeworm and making me feel really shitty. How lovely, hey? Um, anyhow, let's bake some chocolate chip cookies. Sometimes I wonder if it's normal to have needles in your pocket. I don't think it is. It could be taken a really bad way, but it's a farm coat. It's an 18 by one and a half. Probably gave a shot of little lays with this. Should dispose of this safely now. I also found a crochet hook in my overall pockets. Why is there a crochet hook in my overall pockets? I think I was wearing my overalls going to a friend's farm and I saw this in their vehicle, so I took it out and put it in my pocket because I wanted it inside. Now I've packed it around for the last month. Seems legit. Crochet, oh, it's a crochet hook, not a needle. There you go. So for the month of January, we kept track of how many eggs we got and how much milk we got. The boys are adding up, Hamish is adding up eggs, Max adding up milk. So let's see how many dozen eggs we got and how many gallons of milk we got in the month of January.
new video in summer. And I'm with the new milking video in the cat, the cat, and you. And the new, oh, spruce. Can you time how long it is? Come on, can you time how long it is? How long what? The picture is this. Can you bring it? Can you turn it on? Do that, it's on videos. See, now it's on videos, and I thought that out. The life of a Melican. I'm making the life of a Melican. Just everything in the milk. Oh yeah, it's the life of the Melican. Oh yeah, it's the cow coming for. Oh yeah, it's the cow coming for. Oh yeah. It's the cows around. Almost. She just makes a sound. There's cows around. Cows around. Because cow round, cow round. Cows around. Oh, everything is better in the summer. Cows around. Is there a noise? Sometimes bring you down. Okay, can we pull on noise? May you always have cows around. This, do you think this is a long enough video? Who else is gonna get out when you don't close? You don't close the gate? Okay. So I was texting with Marius' brother, like Marius and I were texting, like I was the one typing, but we were both contributing. We often text like that. I'll be the one typing, but we're actually like texting one of his siblings or his friends or whatever. Like having a group message without three phones being involved. Anyhow, he asked us a question that we were like, this is a loaded question in terms of like, this requires a long answer. This needs to be in person, not via text. And Mary's like, he might as well just come for dinner tonight. So now he's coming for dinner tonight, which is in two hours. And we were going to have leftovers, but I'm not serving leftovers to company. So let's figure out what we're going to make for dinner. His wife said chicken or beef was her preference. Look, just a pile of moss on my freezer. Beef is harder to cook last minute, unless you're just doing something with ground beef. So we're going to do chicken here. So my thought is either... This dish, hands-free cashew chicken, that's a good cheap eats one, which is chicken breast, chopped up, frozen vegetables, sauce, cook it, rice. Or I do chicken, legs, roasted, roast potatoes, oven fries. Which would you choose? Cashew chicken on rice, roasted chicken, and roasted potatoes. I'll let you know how I'm gonna choose. Which is the easiest to find on top? It looks like bone-in chicken. There we go. That's how I made my decision. I probably need four per pack. I probably need a dozen. Is that? I think those are thighs. We can do some thighs. We can do some drumsticks. Heck, we'll do 16. They eat a lot. For us, I would do two, so we'll do it like this. Let's go thaw these. His brother did request fish tacos, but fish tacos is a fairly in-depth meal to make, especially when you're making the tortillas yourself and you're deep frying fish and everything. And Mary's is like, I'll make it for him, but not today. Today is a day of rest. It's Sunday today, by the way. So no fish tacos today. I thought he might bite on it. I thought he might just, you know, power of suggestion. Suddenly he's craving fish tacos, but it didn't work. It's been an hour now and he still hasn't been. So chicken it is.
to show you making this, cooking this, what it looked like cooked, but I think the fact that it's mostly disappeared is a really good idea for you. The fact that the, the dinner went over really well. It was so delicious. Everyone loved it. Of them all, who do you think is the prettiest? I, I picked the one from the new what, candles. And I, and I like the flower one. How long does this burn? Long time? Oh, I don't think it says. A lot of hours. A lot of hours. Well, it stays a lot of hours. Slick as snot on a doorknob here. So I've got my ice picks on so that I can just confidently walk through the barnyard because last night I was having to shuffle along. The sun hasn't come up yet. It's about 7.40 right now. It's been pretty mild. Hey. I want to try freeze drying a bunch more chili. So I've got all sorts of delicious things. Let's see, we have moose meat, peppers, onions, beans, spices, tomatoes, all sorts of glorious things we preserved. I'm making a tea. I shared it on Instagram this week. It's called a green tea elixir. It's got lemons in it, but I don't have any fresh lemons, but I do friends have freeze dried lemons. Isn't that wild? They are super intense tasting if you just eat them straight and they powder if you crunch them. So I just need about a lemon's worth. Throw in my tea. Okay, friends. I started this challenge called Cook From Your Stash, and it's all about using what you have and looking to your cupboards before going to the store. So I'm making some bread today. I want hamburger buns for dinner, and I'm following Elaine's fluffy crustless bread on venisonfordinner.com. So the ingredients are very simple. Two tablespoons of butter, two cups of milk, one teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of sugar, two teaspoons of yeast, and four to four and a half cups of flour. So the focus for this month is on dairy for cook from your stash. So that's what I wanted to explain. So it calls for two cups of milk. This rest, it also says here milk, whey, or buttermilk. Not cultured, but the buttermilk you get when you make butter. When you make butter from fresh cream, not cultured cream, you get buttermilk that's the same consistency as milk. So I also made cheese this morning. I could take two cups of the whey. It's not salted at all. I could use some of that whey and use it in place. I could do the buttermilk because I made butter today too. I could take some yogurt from the fridge and water it down so that it's milk consistency. Um, I could take, for every one cup of milk, you can use one and a quarter cup of buttermilk or kefir or clabber 
and use them. So instead of the two cups of milk, I could do two and a half cups of clabber or kefir. A bread recipe is very forgiving in that if you know the end consistency you're going for, it doesn't matter if you end up using more of the, you know, too much buttermilk because you're just going to end up adding a bit more flour. It's not the end of the world and it's not as particular as like a cookie recipe that you end up with cookie soup on your tray if you mess it up too much. The two tablespoons of butter. So I actually have sour cream in my fridge. I made it before I went away. It's pretty strong. I don't wanna use it like on tacos. So I think I'm gonna use a bunch of that. So because I'm using sour cream, I'm not gonna use butter because sour cream is high fat. And I'm gonna swap some of the milk for eggs because we have piles of eggs. You can take a quarter cup of milk and then add one egg instead. So I actually made this sour cream December 27th and it just kind of got forgotten about in the back of the fridge. So it's got some whey that's separating off. I'm gonna purposely pour that off because it will help water this down. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do gonna do two cups of sour cream and one cup of milk and then I'll actually measure the flour I don't usually measure the flour I just scoop it in so we'll tell how far off I was with the liquid at that point so I gotta warm this up to get going on the bread so I have buttermilk here so I did a cup of that approximately maybe a bit fat oh well and we're gonna warm this up and then I'll add the yeast to this. I like to add the yeast to the warm liquid to help give it a jump start. Okay friends, I way overshot the sour cream and milk. I had to add, there was only four and a half cups of flour and I had to add an additional two cups of flour because you want to go till the sides of the bowl are clean. So next time I would probably just add the two cups of sour cream. I added over a cup of milk that definitely was a bit too much. I also used maple syrup instead of sugar, which also adds to the liquid. Anyhow, overshot it, but that's okay. I did add an extra fat pinch of salt to accommodate for that. Everything else is fine, the ingredients. Okay, so that bread is gonna rise now for about an hour, and then I will shape it into buns, half an hour, 45 minutes, and then I'll bake it. Something I do, we have a propane oven, so using, making the best use of propane, because it's only gonna be one tray, maybe two trays of hamburger buns. Propane is expensive these days, yo. Even if you're using electricity. At the point when I shape the buns or you shape the loaves, mix up something else like muffins or cookies or baked oatmeal for tomorrow's breakfast. Mix up something else that you can throw in the oven. You're already in the kitchen, you're already in baking mode, Pop something else in the oven to make the best use of your oven being on. I'm also gonna do a tray of potatoes because this is so simple. You just throw a tray of baked potatoes in to bake while the bread and buns bake. And then I just store these potatoes in the fridge. And like this morning we had potatoes and eggs in breakfast. The potatoes are not quite fully cooked. They weren't, usually they are, but I took them out to student last time. But that's fine, we pan fry them. We could have them as baked potatoes. We can have them as hash browns, having already baked potatoes is like a meal conversation starter in your fridge. It's like, what should I make for breakfast? This morning it was like, ugh, what should I make for breakfast? And I was like, oh, I have some potatoes I need to use up. Okay, Freya, can you chop up those potatoes? She did that. And then when Hamish came in, he fried eggs and we had a lovely breakfast. So you guys saw when we AI'd Mabel and Jess at the start, we preg tested, they weren't pregnant. We started timed and then they both went into heat and we bred them like three days apart. Um, we preg tested them on Monday night. Okay friends, 
look at that. It's only been not even 20 minutes yet. Can you, it's hard to show, but it looks like there's a faint line on Mabel's, but we still got some time to wait. How do you know? I'm pretty sure there's a line on Mabel's. Yeah, I saw it there. Is. Yeah, there is. There and there's for sure a line on Jess's, but we have not even done our time yet. Both are bred. Yes. They're both bred to Milk and Shorthorn. Jess is due October 10th. Mabel, a Jersey cow, has a due date of, um, sorry, not a due date, a gestation of 278 days. Jersey heifer is like 275 days. A brown Swiss is 288 days. A Angus beef cow, for example, is 283. So Mabel is a Jersey heifer, brown Swiss. She has a 41 day window in which she can calve. She's like, stick a fork in me, friends. I'm done. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go crazy watching that cow. Okay, the point of this and why I'm standing in my basement right now is I'm going through this freezer, which has piles of lard, Kale, it also has bear. That's oxtails and tongues from beef that I need to deal with. And butter. Since we now have a due date and thus a dry off date for Jessa, I know by the end of July, I need to have all my dairy preserved that I will need until mid-October, end of October. So, Accounting for at least two months dry, then, you know, at least two pounds of butter a week means I need to have about 20 pounds of butter stashed away. I want to see where we're at right now for butter so that I know at what rate I need, like how much butter do I reasonably need to be making every week to keep us on a good schedule until then. Cheese wise, um, if I keep making one wheel of cheese a week, then we'll be golden. Milk wise, I might actually relief milk for a friend in the same way that we have people relief milk for us. So that's what we'll probably do for milk. Anyhow, time to count some butter. This is not my only butter stash. I have a butter stash, a smaller one in a different freezer. So we'll count this one and then we'll go look at the other one. A rough count tells me, so I have some in one pound blocks and some in four ounce blocks. I've got about 35 pounds of butter here. So I might even just bag up butter in like a tie it in reusable grocery bags and be like, this is our dry time butter stash so that I just know we have that and that I can use whatever, like I just made a few pounds of butter right now upstairs. But you know what I mean? Just so I know I have it set aside so we don't like accidentally not have enough. I think we will not have that issue, but I just can't, okay. That's a little over dramatized. I was gonna say, I can't think of something worse than running out of butter. There's a lot worse things in life, friends, however, Proper planning means we won't run out of butter. One of those planning things is like being more intentional about like tallow out of butter, lard and tallow. Tallow is our least favorite to cook with. I like oven roasting with it. I don't like pan frying with it. So just being more diligent about using tallow for oven roasting or deep frying and using lard for pan frying instead of butter, saving butter for the things that we really want butter for. But realistically, we have enough of all the things we don't have to save it for anything. But those are just one of the things like when I'm low on butter, okay, well then let's make sure we're using more tallow and lard. If I get really low on tallow and lard, our local slaughterhouse that only does small farms, um, I can ask them if they have, like at their next butcher day, slaughter day, sorry, is there anybody who's not taking their fat? And if they're not taking their fat, I'm allowed to go and take it 
and then I can render it for my family. And since these are all small farms in our community, I'm totally happy to consume those over things I would get at the store, even though I may not know what farm it came from. I'm pretty happy with every farm I can find here. So I haven't done that with for lard before, but I've done it for tallow when I've run out of tallow and it was super awesome. I got like 30 quarts of tallow and yeah, it would just otherwise a lot of the time get chucked. So why not make use of it? So I found 10 or 12, I just roughly counted, more pounds of butter in my upstairs freezer. I've been trying to put any new butter in the downstairs freezer and use from the upstairs freezer so that we're making sure we're rotating well. But I have another three pounds here. And then a couple days ago I made butter and this is like pound and a half here. So we have about 50 pounds of butter. This feels perfectly reasonable in case you're wondering. This also isn't accounting for ghee. I probably have at least five pounds of ghee in jars, but again, totally reasonable. Maybe 10 pounds, still reasonable. Okay, so now we're looking at the lemon poppy seed muffins, which I'm gonna do as a loaf pan because that's the vibe I'm feeling here. Um, it calls for one cup of buttermilk or kefir, but I have this sour cream I'm using up. So I think I'm gonna do like one and a quarter or one and a half cup sour cream. I think one and a quarter is a safe bet because my sourdough discard is on the liquidy side too. But you could also do like yogurt plus a bit of milk would also get you a buttermilk type texture. Um, you have lots of options. Clabber discard is also a great way to use that. So I've got the sour cream, sourdough starter, and sugar in here. And now, let's see what else do I need to add in here. Do, do, do. Ooh, we got all the other stuff. Oh, are you saying do, 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 too? Do, do, do. Are you licking the kneading attachment? That's what kneads the bread in the Bosch mixer. Since I am making lemon cake, we're making lemon cake, yeah. Since I'm using sour cream and not buttermilk, and sour cream is a lot higher fat, and it only called for what oh, was it, half a cup or a quarter cup of so half a cup of butter? Okay, so I added a quarter cup more sour cream. I'm gonna add a little bit more sour cream, and I'm just using sour cream instead of butter since um, I already used so much sour cream, it's already so much higher fat. Fat is for richness and moistness and whatever. So I think I'm good leaving out the butter and just using sour cream. Mom? Yeah, you're doing a great job. Thanks, Mom. I'm helping you. Is this good? Mm-hmm. So another thing I do when I'm baking is I do all the wet ingredients on the bottom. Just to say, okay, you want to add some baking soda too? Well, Amos wants to. Okay, add it in. Good job. Okay, so I measure the flour on top after I've mixed together all the wet ingredients, measure the flour on top, then I measure like the baking powder, baking soda, salt on top of the flour, and then just mix it into the flour on the top like this, and, so and then mix it all together. Oh yeah, that's not delicious to eat. Gently? Yeah, gently. So the mixture looks about the right consistency here too. It does help if you make a recipe following it the first time and then from there you start tweaking it to see, you know, then you can start substituting because you know what the end texture is supposed to be like. How's it taste, Rowan? Well, I'm waiting for the buns to finish baking. Let's do the butter. So I do either a plate or a tray or bowl or what it, not a tray, plate or a nine by 13 pan on my scale. Here, let's move this where you can see this better. Okay, so you're not gonna see me, but you see the butter. Okay, so we zero it out. And then I do roughly four pound blocks. I don't wash my butter. I don't salt my butter. 
I make a lot of butter friends and it needs to be as streamlined as possible. So either four ounce or one pound blocks, depending on how I'm feeling. I should just make one pound blocks today. He's drinking milk straight from the jug. So now I've got the four ounce balls all weighed out. Um, they're kind of fat four ounces. And then I'll make them into rectangles to make it easier if they're frozen to measure what I need or just measure in general. Like when you have in and out like a rectangular log, it's easy to go, okay, it's four ounces, but I need a quarter cup. So we'll just do half of it. That little blob there, it's just gonna go in the butter dish on the counter. Or I will just not make it into a rectangle so that it's obvious that it's not four ounces. Even though that one is obvious, but sometimes it's like a three ounce block, right? So make it into a ball, not a rectangle, so I know it's not four ounces measured. The buns are ready to be swapped around here. I put a cast iron on the bottom and I'm trying baking potatoes on the bottom to have four racks, but I gotta switch around the buns here. I am slightly concerned I overfilled those loaf pans. We shall see how this goes. So my buns, oh, thank you, Amos, for poking things, are all done. And they look delicious. Amos is already eating one. My lemon poppy seed bread did not rise over. Thank you very much. The potatoes, oh, I needed to grab a fork. Check the potatoes. Oh, that was one. It's not a one-handed job, apparently. They're close, but definitely not there. So what I'll do is when these come out in a few minutes, I'll just leave the potatoes in the oven and they'll finish doing their thing while the oven cools down. So the lemon poppy seed loaf turned out amazing. I did lemon juice and icing sugar as a glaze. And then, I'm sorry this didn't focus, but Marius was staring at me and I thought he was having like a staring contest or something, but he wanted that end piece, also called the cuppy, if you're a Dutch family, of that lemon loaf. That's why he was staring at me. I forget where I left off here, but I never finished telling you guys about me trying different foods. We gotta go get grain for Clo Jessa though. Okay, but exciting, Clover, we gave her to our neighbors. We traded her and she calved this morning. She had a gorgeous bull calf. Of course it's a bull calf. They're always, you know, the most gorgeous are always bulls. Anyways, absolutely gorgeous. They're doing well. And I'm gonna go over there later. Maybe I'll sneak a little video, not sneak. You know, maybe I'll take a little video to show you guys. Anyhow, so I made cookies and I tried them and I got a stomachache. So, um, wheat is still bothering my stomach. However, as for the muscle testing, I was not reacting to the wheat. So, a year or two ago, my wheat sensitivity started getting worse. And only recently did I put two and two together that this was when I stopped buying organic flour because of the cost. And friends, my wheat sensitivity got worse. Are we putting two and two together here? So, Marius bought a bag of organic all-purpose flour, the stuff we used to buy, and I tried it, and I can eat it. So friends, I can enjoy it's so okay here's the thing it's not the wheat it's the glyphosate and so then i started looking at like other foods that are often higher in glyphosate and those are a lot of foods like almonds that often upset my stomach but not always so maybe that's like when i'm eating them conventional they upset my stomach when i'm eating them organic they don't upset my stomach so She's got a grain now, I can tell the rest of the story. So I used to buy almost exclusively organic. We lived in a place where it was very accessible. It was fairly affordable. 
and it was just so accessible. Like there was regular chicken food and then there was organic chicken food right beside it and it only cost a little bit more. There was like the grocery store, everything they had conventional, they had organic. Not such where we live now. So I kind of just got tired of sourcing and spending so much more and so I started taking shortcuts. And guess what? My stomach started getting worse. I learned recently that glyphosate was originally, I'm gonna maybe butcher this, but was it originally designed, designed, created to kill caterpillars by like melting them from the stomach out. So that I was like, wow, wow. And that's on all our food. Like I've never felt so passionately against glyphosate as I am now. Um, I still have the sourcing and pricing issues though, guys. Like it's still harder to get stuff here. So I'm working on it, but you know, it's gonna mean our grocery budget going up. However, if it means not having stomach aches and feeling better, that's worth it to me. Oh, Cleombrotus, yeah. So the other thing I need to revive doing more of is grinding my own flour with a grain mill. Um, my grain mill, it's kind of dusty. Like it spits a lot of flour out. And I had the opportunity to do a promotion with the Canadian distributors of Como Mills. And... Como Mill also has a sifter attachment, so you can grind the flour and then immediately sift the flour so you have a lighter flour, because we don't really love 100% fresh ground bread. It's just a little dense for us. We're spilling our grain everywhere. Anyhow, so I'm excited to try that out, see the difference in how the Como Mill, um, it's a stone burrs versus the one I have is not stone it's steel it's like an impact mill versus the Como is a stone mill so that's exciting they're out eating their hay anyhow the other thing is that I only have access in local stores and even trying to order in yeah goat just let her eat um, hard red wheat. So there's hard wheats and there's soft wheats. Hard wheat is for bread. Anything you'd use yeast or sourdough for. Soft wheat is for, um, like pastries, breads, sorry, pastries, cookies, muffins, that sort of thing. If you like what you are seeing, be sure to like the video and subscribe so you don't miss any videos. So, people love using hard white wheat. It's a lot milder and lighter in color. It doesn't make quite as dense of bread or strong tasting bread. So, I'm actually organizing with some friends a group order from a place called Fieldstone Organics, which is in our province, and I can get hard white wheat from them. And, um, yeah, I'm excited to see how that goes. I've only had it once to try, so... I'll be ordering a bunch of that because in order to get wholesale, we have to order 50 20 kilo bags. 20 kilos is 44 pounds. So we have to order a pallet of, it can be mixed. It doesn't have to be all one thing. So um, I'm ordering from them. They have all sorts of things grown, mostly in BC, which is the province we're in in Canada. And, but otherwise in Western provinces, um, by organic growers who prioritize healthy soils. So from Fieldstone, I am getting like lentils and chickpeas. We don't eat a lot of lentils, but I decided that if there's something that's grown in our province, and if we're focusing on this like what can be grown here diet, then we need to eat more lentils. Um, chickpeas, we love split peas. Um, what else? Corn, they don't have popcorn, but like corn for cornmeal, so that and some different wheats i'm gonna try durham wheat for pasta i'm just very excited very excited 
Most people are like, yeah, we just want like a couple bags of this and that. But me and one friend are like 15 bags. So we'll get to our 50 bags, mostly just from me and one friend. <laughs> Oh, okay, so we have sour gummy worms, Ew. peach penguins, Skittles, and cola bottles. Cola Ew. bottles? That's what those are? Isn't that hilarious? Can How... I eat a Skittle? Yep. They're probably pretty cold still. Can I eat oh man, that is good. What? Can I eat a penguin, Mom? Yeah, you can try a penguin. Mm. Ooh, what's <laughs> Just so <a> weird. <laughs> Got a little excited. Hilarious. <laughs> mm. mm. And what are those? Sour gummy worms. Mm. Mm. The cola bottles exploded. Mm. 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 How did he taste? Mm. He's more playful than he was earlier this morning. Oh, yeah. So, physiologically, Milk cows are not bred for calves to nurse. They're bred for their teats to be even and straight down for a milking machine. So it's really hard for a calf to learn to nurse. Whereas like if you look at a beef cow, their teats are like sticking sideways. So it's way easier for, hey Enzo, get out of there. Oh, Rowan, you don't run. So they have like real wool and down bedding in here. This is where I got my wool duvet from. They are so amazing. So I'm out here milking tonight. Night's my normal milking. Um, but I also gotta milk tomorrow morning because Mac and Hamish are having a sleepover at a friend's house, which is not normal in our family. We don't really do sleepovers. And the more I ask people, the more people, it's no longer normal to do sleepovers. So we're no longer weird. Have fun. Um, so Clover calved and they're working on getting into their milking routine with her, but it's hard because they haven't really hand milked much and she's got big teats and there's a lot of colostrum to milk out. And um, Mac and Hamish are both, especially Mac, are very proficient milkers. Hamish has a hard time milking Jessa with her small teats, but he could milk out Clover on his own. So they're staying there tonight to milk tonight and tomorrow morning with them and to help their boys and encourage their boys to get milking because their boys are the same age as my boys. Okay, hold on a second. I got to call the cows in. Milk time, cows. Come on. Cobus. Cobus. Anyhow, it's a pretty special big deal that they're there for a sleepover and they're very excited and I hope it goes well for them. Milking Clover and that she's not fussy because she just calved yesterday. But also, we are 36 hours, more than 36 hours since she calved and there's no signs of milk fever. Praise the Lord, we are out of the high risk zone. So hopefully it continues on that way. They have everything they need if they need to treat her. Plus they have our phone number and we're like, please call us, please. We are emotionally invested in this cow. You own this cow now, but we're still emotionally invested. And if you need help, please call us, please call us. But we're out of the high risk zone. Did grocery store and feed store. And I'm just gonna show you what I bought as we unloaded here. I backed up to our basement door because most of it's all going to the basement and then I can drive around and unload the feed. So I just asked the boys to come down and help me but I'll start showing you what I got. Oh, I bought a lot of honey. I did not buy an unreasonable amount of honey, but I bought a lot of honey because our local suppliers are starting to sell out because we had a bad year. So I was like, you know what? We need to like have more than a few months worth at a time on hand because if they run out, we can't get anything till like summer or fall, depending on how our bees do all these things. Honey's a non-negotiable for us. So I bought a lot. So I got three bags of organic unbleached flour and, last time and I got th one. three bags of organic cane sugar because it's hard like so it's on sale Hamish please don't talk over top of me it was on sale from 
$75 to $39 or $40. So you need to get a bunch of that stock up lasts forever. So uh, the, treat, the treat Freya picked to share was dried mango. I told them they could pick some fruit and she asked if it could be dried mango. So sure. Um, a bag of oranges. None of the other ones really looked very good. Those are organic navels. I got some lemons for Marius. He made this dish, um, sardine poo poo. P U P U Mac, not P O O. It's a Hawaiian dish, and he was like, they had way different sardines that were like way bigger in the video, not the tiny ones he had. And these looked like a bigger can, and so I decided to get some for him to see if they would be like that. Um, and I got some hoisin sauce to make um, drunken chicken uh, Thai dish. So this is one of the three honeys I got. These are one kilogram unpasteurized creamed honey. This is 100% honey product to Canada, but it's not local. This is like my last choice for honey, um, for raw honey. However, honey does not go bad. So this is going in our food storage for like, in case we can't get any local honey, at least we have this. What if dead? Big garbage bags, small garbage bags. What if dead? Hello, Cleon Brodus. Okay, um, underneath here we have sea salt, this is a 50 pound bag, and then this is cheap coarse canning salt for ice melt. Um, I also bought two things of a different ice melt. Three bags of unmedicated turkey starter, that's what we feed the quail. Two things of shavings, one thing of, or two things of alfalfa pellets four bags of dog food. My second honey purchase, I got eight local three kilogram things of honey. What on earth? What? More honey? Just wait a second, I told you I'd explain. This is a very delicious local honey. Um, Bob has the bought those. <laughs> There's a big ice thing. Right by the vehicle, so I'm tanning up really tall above it. I'm not this tall. Um, it's not for me, guys. Stop hassling me about all the honey. Okay, so at the health food store, I did not buy them out. I did not buy anybody out. At, I bought honey at three different places. So at the health food store, I asked them, I said, I see you have this much honey on the shelf. Can I buy eight buckets of it? Um, and the woman was like, absolutely. I was like, okay, I just ethically, I don't want to clear the shelf, but we go through a lot of honey. Um, we serve honey at homeschool group with tea once a month. We serve honey once a week home church once a week Bible study, woman's Bible study, as well as just our family's own consumption, as well as making mead, although we don't need to make any mead anytime soon. Anyhow, point being, honey is an amazing local sweetener. So good for you. So many good things in it for you. I don't want to stop consuming it because we can't get it anymore. So it was time for Kate to buy a bunch of honey. BM Bicarb, aka baking soda, I bought at the feed store. However, it's for the house. It's the cheapest place to buy a bunch of baking soda. It's considered feed grade. The only difference I find is that it has some clumps to it. Hey, Mom. Hi. <laughs> At the thrift store, I bought 20 canning jars and one reclosable wine bottle. Um, I also bought carrots at the health food store.